Hello everyone, welcome back again to the NPTEL online certification course on research methodology for planning and architectural studies. So far we have discussed about several aspects of our research design, the survey, particularly you know the way you can collect the information, the secondary data collection, primary survey and mostly the data and information that are required to you know uh, do the analysis for your intended research purpose. But many a times like whatever you collect from the field as a raw form or whatever the data you collected from secondary sources, they are not really formatted or they are not really you know in a particular desired format which you can directly use for your analysis. So for that you need to process the data, you need to remove such kind of missing data or maybe the data which are not reliable or the data which are inconsistent so that you finally get a you know define and refine a data set for your analysis. So taking that particular aim in mind today we will be discussing about that important topic of processing of data and database management as our lecture title 31. So in this particular lecture what we are going to learn, we are going to learn about processing of data, then different stages of that and then there are certain problems in data processing. So with that uh, you know definitely we will get certain kind of idea that what to do once we collect the information from the primary survey or maybe from some secondary sources. Now processing of the data in this case pictorially if you see that you know you may have a huge amount of information something from maybe the web, something from something kind of survey, something from social media, something from video etc. And all of them are needed in some way or other for your research and then it is like to process it. So in this case definitely when you put all this information. So the proper segregation, proper classification and then putting into a typical file format is required. So in this case if you see that you know uh, the data are processed, it is sorted and then finally in terms of word document, in terms of video content or PDF. So proper storage is required of those information and also it should be tabulated, it should be compiled the way it is required for analysis purpose. Maybe certain software that you are going to use for your study requires certain input file which is not typically probably a Word file or Excel file. Maybe in that case we have to insert the value there itself or else there is something called some software they are asking that you can upload your uh, data tabulated in Excel but you make it the comma separated file like dot csv file and then you can do that. If you are using certain programming language there is some kind of command which can read certain data type it may be dot dat or maybe like it, it all depends on the requirement of the software the analysis tool that you are going to use. So the main point is that the collected information or the data is raw and must be converted into suitable form of uh, this particular data for required analysis. Result gets affected highly by form of representing the data. So if there is some kind of error in your data that obviously sometimes you know will impact your results. Sometimes if there is some missing component and all and you try to analyze with the software it will not properly run or maybe in such cases will give some distorted result and this will be very difficult then to represent. Appropriate data processing is essential to obtain reliable results because that is something the data the input that you are giving is you know in a proper uh, and required format. So processing of data enables researcher to analyze information and derive insight 
and also it is facilitating the informed decision making. So, if your data is itself is erroneous, if the collected information is not well uh, organized and you analyze something, so then that decision or that outcome, if it is something like there is no outcome coming because of the error, the system is showing certain error, this is one. But even if it is giving some of the outcome out of your information without making this organized or defined, so then that is also a wrong thing. So, for a informed decision making, we have to really process the data, we have to refine the data in interest of that analysis. Now, the common stages of processing the data. So, in this case stages of data processing are guided by the plan of data analysis, which is normally decided before the data collection. It started with the questionnaire checking, editing, coding of data, classification of data, tabulation of that you know required information in a particular format, representation of data is very important, which will make things clear to the reader and researcher as well to interpret. Then cleaning of data and then adjusting if required. Now questionnaire checking, this is undertaking during the data collection which involves the examination of completeness and inter wing quality. So, this can be done in two phases like first check definitely when you go for a pilot survey with your set of questions and also you have given training uh, to the surveyor or you yourself are uh, going to interview. So, during that pilot and that process you will come to know that few difficulties in some of the questions or maybe in, in uh, the way the dialogue is happening, there is certain ambiguity with certain kind of uh, you know component of a questions which is not clear. So, there is a chance that you can rectify and that can be omitted in your final questionnaire. But again in that case definitely it will depend on uh, two aspect first probably the respondent initially willing to take part in that particular survey, but after filling two, three questions decide not to go on and then leave it in between. So, then that particular questionnaire is becoming incomplete and if we take that into our database, then some of the questions are unanswered. Other point is that interviewing quality, suppose who are doing the survey depending on their throwing of the questions or something. So, the answer may also differ. So, we have to assure that this thing very carefully that there should not be any su such influence of the surveyor on the respondent. A questionnaire should not be accepted if partially or fully incomplete. So, whenever you get all the information, so either you have collected it like uh, say for example, you have collected it through online survey. So, whenever it is online, so you can always like see those kind of things are stored in a particular spreadsheet and then you can check if there is blank somewhere and if it is not intended to, to be the blank space, you can identify those and you can remove it. If by mistakes the same responses are stored twice. So, duplicate responses that also can select and remove and in such cases like definitely there will be other few options. Suppose you have done this particular exercise offline and now you are entering it to a particular spreadsheet. During that entering process, you will find that some of the questionnaire are not completed. So, you can segregate and you do not take that data into your database. Other the respondent is having inadequate knowledge and does not qualify. Suppose you find that ok, this is something where the questionnaire is being answered, but finally that is not the user group or that person and then looking at the responses you find that ok, it is not really a good response and then it is abruptly done and randomly you know uh, that respondent had picked up certain options. So, you can discard it. Responses indicates that respondent could not understand the question because many a times you know in the questionnaire 
we used to give some cross questioning thing so that you can understand that okay whether that responded is filling up the questionnaire carefully or it is just a random thing say for example if my intent to understand that uh, about the importance of the income uh, in in decision making to select like some kind of options like uh, go for a uh, ac bus or ac taxi or a normal taxi or a normal bus in such cases if you have some kind of questions on that okay uh, the cost i don't consider and later on whenever cost related questions will come and then you will find that someone is considering the least cost and compromise all the quality so that means there is ambiguity in the thought process that okay obviously the decision making criteria is the cost even if that respondent has mentioned somewhere that the cost is not a factor to be considered after that next stage is editing in this case process of examining the raw data and detect the errors omissions and correct them so if something is to be corrected that it is by mistakes it is something some error okay normally this kind of errors happening when you have a off line data collection and then you are trying to enter it so there might be a obvious error and then you can correct it assures uh, the data is accurate consistent and uniformly entered and also complete and will arrange for further stage of coding and tabulation two kind of editing can take place one is field editing which can be completed uh, you know in in the stage during the recording of responses say for example some kind of abbreviated or illegible form other one is the central editing where it is to be done where editing of all forms to align in a standardized form so if there is some sort of you know transformation to certain kind of value so it is something like i want to transform it to some kind of other scale or maybe some question so we can do it in that way coding coding of uh, uh, this particular data is something where we assign some kind of numerical value or the symbol to that particular response it must process the characteristics of exhaustiveness and mutual exclusivity so whenever you give coding so the coding is to be done in such a way that those assigned values are distinctly different coding is necessarily for some sort of efficient analysis codes the questionnaire choice you know in the beginning to assist for tabulation so this kind of things you know where uh, for such kind of questionnaire uh, whenever you make those kind of questionnaire there itself you can code those kind of information say the other day we have seen about the census questionnaire so there if you recall that there were certain kind of questions where there was certain code available like if it is something like married you you give one or unmarried give two and then if it is like uh, you know separated give three something like that so that it can be uh, you know used during you know taking the response in a quick time or is this kind of coding can be done later on as well where we entered say male female uh, or maybe you know other gender like 0 1 3 2 whatever values or the age group that we also have discussed earlier so we give a code which will help us to do the analysis in a effective way next is the classification where you have set of information and you have to cluster those information so in this case it the it is the process of arranging data in groups or classes based on common characteristics say for example common characteristics can be descriptive like literacy rate then the sex or the gender or it can be numerical it can be also the age weight income etc data can be classified according to the class interval so whatever you know we have those kind of values the 
low lower limit and the upper limit and the intervals we can uh, classify. So, say for example, if you want to uh, measure say spot speed of vehicles on a highway. So, in that case you can uh, just uh, can measure uh, the spot speed and then you try to classify them into some group intervals. So, in that case you can say that 0 to 20 kilometer per hour, 20 to 40 kilometer per hour. 40 to 60 kilometer per hour and 60 to 80 kilometer uh, per hour. And then if you measure say 100 such speed data and you can say that 0 to 20 is 8 and then this is 20, this is say 12 and mostly what you find that uh, in this particular case 60 out of 100 vehicles are achieving the speed spot speed into that category. So, this is classified into that interval where these are like uniform intervals. It may not be in, uh, in uh, like you know uniform interval, but this is some sort of classification you can do. The other classification definitely you know if you consider a particular intersection and then you try to find out the you know turning moment that it can be a straight, it can be a left, it can be a right movement and then you measure it for different kind of you know vehicles. So, for car, uh, bus, two wheeler, auto and then you can classify that in a particular table. So, it may be left, it is right and it is straight and a different direction. So, definitely from A to B uh, so, if you give a name A, B, C, D, so A to B how it is moving, so A to B is nothing but the right movement. So, like that you can classify your data. Tabulation is very important part of the data processing uh, exercise. This is the procedure to arrange the assembled data in concise and logical order conserves the space reduce explanatory and descriptive statement to a minimum. So, here it is everything in a tabulator form. It facilitates the process of comparison. It also assists in summation of the items and the uh, you know detection of the errors and omissions. So, whenever you tabulate the entire data, you can see that where the data is out layer, where maybe the ranges are like uh, within 100 ok say 50 to 100 and some values you are getting is something like 900 that might be a mistake while entering the data and all but in the tabulation you can get it so to find out those kind of outliers in the analysis and all so tabulation can help you so this provides a basis for various statistical computational uh, exercise so tabulation is very important where you know you classified the data, you code the data and then finally, you tabulate. Next is the graphical representation. So, it helps to understand the data very easily because tables may look complicated, but the resultant might in terms of a graph, a bar chart, a pie chart, there are many way you can represent those information. So, definitely you know in our upcoming lectures, I will also talk about that the different methods by which or different kind of graphs or different you know representation which will convey your uh, you know results in a very effective manner. Data can be represented using wide range of graphs, it can be a bar chart, it can be a line chart, it can be a multiple bars, pie chart, even in that case you can also have different kind of plot. So, box plot is one of them where it is not only showing those kind of mid value, it can also represent some sort of out layers and all. So, we will discuss that when we uh, discuss the uh, data interpretation and understanding the data, what kind of graph can be used, there it will be much more clear. But the representation of data is also important stage of data processing. Data cleaning. So, this is something you know checking the data for consistency and treatment for missing value in an extensive manner. 
in some cases you know there are di different algorithm by which you can also do the analysis for the missing value you can generate the missing value by the trend or else you have to totally remove that particular data set consistency check look for inconsistent data or outliers which can be discarded or replaced by mean value so in some cases as i mentioned that if the value is not there or it is a outlier we can go for the mean or median depending on the type of analysis whether you go for a ordinal or interval data whether you go for a parametric or non parametric data analysis you will select the way extreme values or outliers are not always erroneous so that we need to understand it's not that you know some values are extreme so it is not always erroneous we have to take a call on that in place of missing value neutral value which may be the mean of available values can be used so that's why like you know in some cases if, if the value is something is totally outlier or missing we should not simply delete it that can also be like uh, you know assume it to be the mean value but depending on the need of the research and the purpose it will be decided data adjusting is another uh, um, you know process it is not always required to adjust it but it improves the quality of analysis sometimes so where you can do some sort of transformation weight assigning method is something where it assign the weight to each respondent or in this case like to reflect its importance relative to others so somewhere you can give certain weightages to those respondent and then you create that kind of you know weighted uh, responses variable respecification method involves creating a new variables or modifying ex existing variables so sometimes you know uh, if you have two variables measured and then probably in your analysis you want uh, something to be you know combined so you can take two variables and represent one say for example if you have for a special analysis you have the population data separately you have area separately so out of that you can create a new variable which is called population density which is population by the area so in such case like you create a new variable out of the data and you use it so that is possible or else you can modify the data with certain kind of scale like probably you have collected in certain form and now you want it into another form so you can transform it to ensure the comparability with other scale or to make the data suitable for the analysis this scale transformation method is very useful and it is being used right so you can sometimes uh, having the data you go for some sort of normalization you can transform it to a mean max uh, transformation where you convert those kind of raw values to a scale value for your analysis uh, purpose sometimes you know log transformation is taken into certain you know uh, case i'll show you some examples later on in our discussion in this course that you know in some cases we have to transform those values to a log transformation which will be useful to measure certain sort of you know uh, indicators for certain study so data adjusting is also uh, uh, you know possible but data adjusting doesn't mean that you have to do some manipulation you will just create a synthetic data you can just create a data which will fit better the model it is not so transformation is happening because that particular algorithm needs that kind of input that you can do somewhere if some weightage is to be given to those kind of uh, you know uh, you know responses that you can do because this is a uniform to all and then definitely you know if there is some sort of you know previously we have seen uh, that we have discussed about if there is missing data you can also take the mean value Uh, or the tendency central tendency of those kind of uh, data set to just include it right so it is not always that you have to discard those values or suppose say for example you are having uh, the neutral value in your responses in earlier class we have discussed about that that people may say that okay, okay i'm neutral i'm not saying i'm dissatisfied or i'm satisfied 
So in that particular case with those kind of neutral points, you should not uh, you know delete it or remove it from your database so that you, you want something you know some answer should be there. So in such cases definitely you have to uh, uh, consider those input as well. The problems in data processing exactly what I mentioned earlier, it is that you know the problem concerning do not know responses. Maybe when you have a small you know sample where this kind of do not know responses uh, group is still okay, it has uh, maybe a little significance, but when it is a big data set and you have maximum question do not know, there is no such answer received. So, it will be very difficult. In such cases either the respondent may not know how to answer it or the researcher may fail to obtaining the appropriate information, the questionnaire was not very clear. That is why the questionnaire design is a very crucial role. So, I advise you spend time on it, you ask yourself that questions, you can ask somebody who are not from technical background that whether the question is logical and based on that question what kind of answer that he or she is giving. So, whether for those kind of questions like especially when you go for a close ended questionnaire, things are still under control, but if it is open ended then maybe that may lead to a different direction. So, open ended question should be very clearly asked so that the intended answer or the assume answer should be within the range of consideration. Best way to deal with all these kind of issues, design a better type of question. So, you know you, you should look into the questionnaire that you know previously done and then try to uh, understand if say you have opportunity to, to interact with your uh, you know other scholar uh, around you and all. So, you understand their problems what they faced during the interview with that. So, Gradually you will understand that okay what type of question to be framed so that you can get the intended answer or maybe there should not be such kind of ambiguity uh, in, in uh, explaining the questions as well as uh, you know responding to those questions by the respondents right. So, I will also share some of such kind of you know uh, experience with the case studies that okay uh, what kind of difficulties we faced during that kind of data collection how we overcome that, how we have modified those kind of uh, you know um, questions which were not very easy to interpret by the respondent and then how we overcome that particular part in our study. So, here uh, we are ending this particular discussion. So, in this case we have discussed the processing of data, how important it is uh, and how important it is. Uh, for a researcher uh, to you know get uh, some good analysis and this is the you can say that uh, you know it is something prerequisite to analyze the results or analyze that particular data uh, with your model. So, at this stage whatever the ambiguity in the data set, any errors, any incompleteness, any co inconsistency that should be checked and then a final refined data set should be used for your analysis. But with that particular uh, aspect I would again uh, like to mention that the adjustment does not mean or the refinement does not mean that you modify everything whatever the data you have collected from the field and you are modifying uh, to get uh, the synthesized result that is not uh, ethical and that is not a good sign for a researcher. So, whatever data you have collected out of that in a logical way you have to you know process it and then use it for your analysis. Then stages of processing data starting from your you know cleaning of the data, editing, adjust, then and then tabulation, then the adjusting if required, transformation those kind of things you can do. And the problems is definitely uh, with the do not know options or maybe if you get something at mostly the neutral value. So, for that spend time on designing the questionnaire, look at the other questionnaires and then get certain idea that what to do uh, with your questionnaire. So, that you will not face such kind of difficulty 
while conducting your survey and then post processing of those collected information. So, these are the further readings and all already I shared in our my previous lectures and go through this. So, next we will have very important uh, lecture that is on interpreting the data. When you have data before analyzing initial analysis about the frequency, about the central tendency, etcetera, etcetera, how you interpret those kind of information and which will give you some sort of initial indication about overall data and the findings. So, we will be discussing in our next lecture. So, thank you for joining this course. Hope you are enjoying it uh, and then all this discussion and the lectures are going to help you in conducting your research in planning and architecture in an effective manner. So, if you have any questions write back to me, we will interact and we will solve your doubt. Thank you, we will be meeting in our next lecture very soon.